Well, Storm Watch is highlighted tonight by four tropical systems, three hurricanes and one tropical storm. Let's have a look at them. Our tropical update shows us the Atlantic Basin. And can you make out the four tropical systems? Well, if you've been watching the Weather Channel at all, you have heard about Hurricane George making its way into the eastern Gulf of Mexico. That's that one. That's number two. That's number one. The G storm, George. The H storm is nowhere to be found. We had a weak tropical storm that moved into the uh, Gulf Coast last week sometime. That was tropical storm Hermine. That was the H storm. In the meantime, the I, J, and K storms of the season have formed. This is the J storm, that's Hurricane Jean. This is the K storm, that's Hurricane Carl. And this is the I storm, Tropical Storm Ivan. So there's more than just Hurricane George out there, but this is the one that is affecting the United States, the fifth tropical system to make landfall in the United States this season. Been very, very active for U.S. residents. On September the 15th, Hurricane George became a tropical storm just off the coast of Africa. And then 15 to 20 miles an hour all the way across the Atlantic Ocean. St. Kitts takes a hit. The Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, Haiti, San uh, Dominican Republic, then right on up toward Cuba, the Keys, Key West, and now it's right in the Gulf of Mexico. 110 miles an hour, northwest wind, northwesterly motion at 10 miles an hour, which would put the central Gulf Coast under the gun. Obviously, that's why hurricane warnings are in effect from Morgan City, Louisiana, right around to the mouth of the Mississippi River, then northwestward into New Orleans and Lake Pontchartrain. Consider this, a hurricane here as winds coming into it. Imagine a hurricane right here. The winds are funneling in this way. So there'd be a lot of water that's forced up in here, Gulf water, plus rainwater coming down from the sky. So we're gonna have to deal, looks like we're gonna have to uh, deal with a lot of water in Southern Louisiana, Southern Mississippi, probably Southern Alabama, and parts of the Florida Panhandle all the way over to Panama City. A tropical storm warning or hurricane watch is in effect from Panama City over to St. Mark's for this. Hurricane George, find the eye. Of course you can, right in there. That's the center of the circulation. Whenever you see the location of a hurricane, they're talking about the center of the eye. And of course, that location is the center of a mass of rain, of wind, tropical storm force winds out a couple of hundred miles in any direction of this hurricane. So we'll feel this thing long before the actual eye comes on shore. So that's something to keep in mind. Once the eye comes on shore, half the hurricane is already there. Capiche, all right? So this is moving toward the northwest at 15 miles an hour. There are evacuation orders all over the place. You know what we're talking about. You can see the rain shield getting closer and closer to the coast brushing St. George Island, St. Joseph Peninsula, Port St. Joe, and we expect this rain to move right on into New Orleans during the day, New Orleans on Tuesday, on Sunday, that is, lasting till Tuesday, most likely. Now, that's Hurricane George, the G storm. Here's the K storm, now a hurricane, Carl, 105 miles per hour winds, it's probably maxed out, but it's moving away from land northeast at 21 miles an hour. Good news. Another one moving away from land is Tropical Storm Ivan. This was a hurricane for a while too. It has weakened. It's still packing 70 mile per hour winds, hooking up with a cold front, and this will be a gale center, a, strong, a, a wind machine for some of our friends in Western Europe in a couple of days' time, moving east quickly at 35 miles per hour. Then there's another hurricane, Hurricane Jean. That came off of Africa, just about the same place as Hurricane Georges, but it's been taking a more northerly track, and it is beginning to get caught up in the westerlies. As it feels those westerlies, it's drawn north, and then it... <laughs>
Hurricane George first started making news when it became a tropical storm off the African coast the better part of two weeks ago as a tropical storm at that time. Now, since then, it's reached hurricane status and a powerful one, too, leaving a path of destruction across the northern Caribbean islands and, of course, as you know, South Florida. Now, the hurricane has maximum sustained winds of 110 miles per hour and it's getting closer to the central Gulf Coast. Good morning and welcome to Weather Center. I'm Dave Schwartz. We are constantly tracking this hurricane and now for the latest, we turn to Warren Madden in the Forecast Center. The Louisiana coast is no stranger to tropical systems this year. First, we were dealing with Francis not too long ago, which dumped uh, inches upon inches of rainfall in the Metro New Orleans area, causing some severe flooding. Then there was Tropical Storm Hermine, which uh, by and large is a fairly weak system, but jo uh, Georges, a completely different beast, on the verge of being a Category 3 hurricane and taking dead aim on the mouth of the Mississippi River and also into the New Orleans metro area. Let us take a look at the latest advisory out of the National Hurricane Center. As of 1 a.m. Central Daylight Time, the center of uh, Georges, 240 miles southeast of New Orleans, or about 160 miles southeast of the mouth of the Mississippi. Top winds at 110 miles an hour, moving to the northwest at 10 miles an hour, a fairly consistent path, as you can see here over the last 11 days, and central pressure at 970 millibars. Hurricane warnings are posted from Morgan City, Louisiana, all the way over to Panama City, Florida. On the west side, from Morgan City to Intracoastal City, hurricane watch out. From Panama City to St. Mark's on the east side, a hurricane watch and a tropical storm warning. But it is here in New Orleans that it, the preparations are at a feverish pitch. Sandbag walls going up, hoping to stop the flooding should Hurricane George zoom in on the New Orleans metro area. Very prone to flooding this area, much of New Orleans below sea level, and uh, dorms at the University of New Orleans on near Lake uh, Pontchartrain were being evacuated on Saturday as a precaution against possible floodwaters. Joining me here in the Forecast Center, Senior Meteorologist Colin Marquis. And as the system keeps working its way on in, Colin, we uh, continue to uh, try to give people a sense of what to expect and, and the timeline to expect here. But we want to just keep re-emphasizing this is a very dangerous storm. This isn't any kind of Hermine situation. We've had a couple of systems affect the Gulf Coast earlier this year, and they have been very weak for the most part. A lot of heavy rain. This is a horse of a different color. This has uh, sustained winds uh, approaching Category 3 status that is on the cusp of being dubbed a major hurricane. The point is that it is a very dangerous situation or, and for folks who are in the path, and in this case it looks like New Orleans over toward Biloxi may be in the, uh, headed for maybe some of the worst conditions. Mm -hmm. It is a very, very dangerous situation and folks need to really pay attention to the details in the next 12 to 18 hours. We need to take this seriously, folks, and as we look at our satellite picture, we can show you what is happening here. We're still waiting for the next image to come out after the eclipse, where the uh, the satellite is not capable of, of uh, transmitting a new image to us. That should be ending any time now, but right now we are still looking at a fairly organized system, and it is plodding along relentlessly, it seems, in general, to the northwest. Very constant motion, and it's a steady state storm. It's not strengthening rapidly it's not decreasing in intensity so we think that that trend will continue as it continues to chug on off to the northwest over the next 12 to 18 hours Warren. Okay let's take a look at the path now that is forecast for this system and we can show you that cone of possibility here and you can see that uh, it extends from the Florida Panhandle out on toward the Louisiana Texas border but the main area is heading on in toward the uh, area of New Orleans in the mouth of the Mississippi. We think that uh, the storm will be headed toward the mouth of the Mississippi and eventually toward the city of New Orleans and that, in that time frame is about 18 to 24 hours from now and that means that uh, throughout the morning hours some rain bands will be affecting uh, the coastal areas from uh, extreme western Florida back down toward southeastern Louisiana. During the afternoon I think uh, tropical storm force winds will first be uh, felt uh, along the coastal areas, that being 39 miles per hour or higher. And then during the course of the evening, that's when the first hurricane force winds, those being 74 miles mm -hmm. per hour or higher, will be felt. And then during the overnight hours, that's when it could really, really get bad across parts of southeastern Louisiana and uh, parts of southern Mississippi as well. 
uh, where the winds could gust uh, in excess of 100 miles per hour. And unfortunately, the National Weather Service, the National Hurricane Center, is uh, suggesting that the system may actually slow down as it comes in toward the coast. And if it does so, that could mean uh, an extended period of heavy rain in around the uh, southeast Louisiana area and the potential for a lot of flooding. Our greatest concern at this point, given where we think the storm may go, is that we are talking about a storm surge coming up the Mississippi River, impacting New Orleans and some flooding in that respect, and then add on top of that potentially 10 or 20 inches of rain if this thing really does slow down. And the combina combination of those two factors could mean a significant and major flood mm -hmm. situation for Metro New Orleans. We are looking at the potential for a storm surge anywhere between 10 and 20 feet, and that is uh, in a low-lying area like southeastern Louisiana, could be a devastating type of flooding. And that's before we even get to any rainfall falling. Colin, we'll be checking in with you in about a half an hour as we continue our coverage during the overnight hours of the approach of Hurricane George in toward the Mississippi and uh, Louisiana coastline. If you have to be away from your TV, you can check out our website at weather.com com for all the latest information on Hurricane George or on the weather around the nation, perhaps where you live, find out what's going on for your Sunday. And speaking of Sunday, let's get the forecast now as we head back into the studio with Dave Schwartz. And thanks a lot, Warren. It is Sunday, of course, across the country right now and a relatively quiet night for most of us from New York City back to Nashville, Houston, a little rock, fair weather, a little warm, but uh, there's no rough weather out there. Kansas City, some clouds, a few showers in the area. Uh, back into Montana, Seattle, maybe some fog in the morning, that's just about it. And you'll see some clouds out there in, in Nevada and California in association with a weak storm, but it is putting down some rain on Interstate 80 and snow above 7,000 feet in the northern Sierra Nevada mountains. This has been the other big story. In addition to the hurricane down here, it's been severe thunderstorms. Now, this is the rain that has been put down by the latest round of severe thunderstorms across New York State. Watch this. Isn't that something? This is a cumulative uh, uh, image that we're looking at. Doppler estimated rainfall totals from Ontario back through New York State, southern Vermont, New Hampshire, into Massachusetts and Connecticut. And if you live there, you know what blew through later uh, earlier on tonight. Not only did we have some heavy rain, but we also had some severe weather. Some thunder showers developing in Concord. Light rain here in Boston to Fowler. <laughs> Good morning, and thanks for joining us here at the Weather Center. I'm meteorologist Mark Mean Cuso. We continue to monitor a dangerous Hurricane George as it makes its move in northwestward through the Gulf of Mexico, and it threatens the North Gulf Coast with very heavy rains and a dangerous storm surge. Let's give you the particulars right now on where George is located as of 1 a.m. Central Daylight Time. 27.6 north, 87.2 west. Uh, that position about 240 miles southeast of New Orleans, Louisiana. That is where the center of the storm is. Uh, again, keep in mind we're not talking about a point. We're talking about a large area of high winds and heavy rains. Uh, winds 110 miles an hour near the center of circulation. Movement continues to be northwesterly, 10 miles an hour. That really hasn't changed, and the pressure is still holding around 970 millibars. And with the storm continuing to move to the northwest, we have hurricane warnings and watches uh, uh, positioned all along the Gulf Coast here. Here you can see them, hurricane warnings uh, from Morgan City, Louisiana, right on across to Panama City, Florida. And a hurricane warning, again, that means you can expect a hurricane conditions within the next uh, 24 hours. So in these areas, uh, residents uh, should be uh, rushing to completion all their preparations, in particular, New Orleans, Biloxi, and Mobile, and Pensacola. East and west of here, we have hurricane watches to Intracoastal City and over to St. Mark's. We also have some tropical storm warnings in effect as well along the North Gulf Coast. And with this storm bearing down on the Gulf Coast, residents of Louisiana were getting uh, uh, preparations underway in New Orleans. Many people spent their day boarding up their homes and businesses. Sandbag walls also went up in hopes to hold back potential floodwaters. New Orleans, of course, prone to flooding because of its very low elevation. In Pensacola Beach, many folks were securing their boats or moving them out of the marinas as a precaution. Only days ago, Hurricane George was responsible for destroying 20 houseboats and floating homes 
in Key West, down the coast of Florida. And Biloxi residents were also busy grabbing up supplies today. Many flocked to supermarkets to stock up on extra food and water. And of course, it's always a good idea to have a battery-powered radio to keep up on the latest information and extra batteries in case your power does go out. And of course, with the storm uh, moving its way through the Gulf of Mexico, we've been keeping an eye on it overnight. Colin Marquis is joining us here. Colin, you've been following the storm. What have you seen that has changed uh, in the past six hours or so? Well, actually, not too much. Uh, the latest satellite imagery we have shows that the thunderstorms have grown a little bit more intense, and the symmetry around the center of that storm is a little better, but we've seen flare-ups like this throughout the course of the day, and the intensity did not change. Really, it's been a very steady state system for the past 12 to 24 hours. The center, which you cannot see on the latest imagery here, is right about there, just a little bit south of the deepest reds on your screen there. Notice also that the main activity is a disproportionate amount of thunderstorms on the eastern side of this storm. And if this continues, which we think it will, then even though areas along the central Gulf Coast over toward Mobile and even Pensacola, even though they're going to be pretty far away from where the center crosses the coast, we're still expecting quite a bit of uh, heavy rain and the squally winds in there as well. As we take a look at our satellite picture here too, uh, can you pick out any signs of further intensification or any weakening? You think this storm is getting a little better organized as it heads to New Orleans or really no change? In the short term, there certainly has been a trend for intensification. Notice the reds blossoming through the satellite picture here. However, I do want to caution that we've seen this with this storm throughout the day today where we've seen short-term uh, flare-ups and the overall picture was that the storm stayed very very constant in intensity so this is a very short uh, snapshot uh, of time where we've seen this intensification and we're not prepared to say that that means that there's any any overall or uh, significant strengthening of the storm. Okay, very good. Let's take a look at the radar for you and you can see where the rain bands are and how close they are getting to the coast. Any comments on this? Well, you can see, even though we could not see the center of circulation on the satellite because we think it was covered by cirrus clouds, it's right about in there and notice that it continues to consistently move on off to the northwest even though we did see just a wee bit of a jog to the north we're thinking that it's coming back again, which it also has done throughout the day. It's been taking jogs and wobbling left and right, but the overall track has been a very, if you, if you look at it over the past 12 or 18 hours, been a very constant and steady northwest at about 10 miles an hour. Okay, I'm looking at the coast here, residents uh, all along the coast, New Orleans, Mobile, Pensacola area, Pensacola and Apalachicola here, saying, hey, not a whole heck of a lot is happening, but as we get a little bit closer on in, we, we do see the potential for significant changes coming on up. We're looking at the forecast track for you right now, and after we take a look at that, we'll, we will take a look at that close-up radar. The, uh, for, the official forecast track takes it toward the mouth of the Mississippi River by about this evening, by early this evening, uh, and there is a possibility that this storm may intensify just a little bit. Um, and it's on the cusp of a Category 2, Category 3 right now. Uh, some indications and the official forecast do bring it up to Category 3 status. The bottom line is it's a dangerous storm. It's coming toward New Orleans, and New Orleans and Biloxi seem like the two areas, or the two major areas, that would be in the uh, worst location as far as this landfall. Okay, I live in New Orleans. I live in Mobile. What is my weather going to be like today? Well, we're going to see some of these outer bands that are out over the Gulf right now heading inland, and so during the morning hours, we expect some of the outermost bands to come in. Brief heavy rain, then the band will move through. Perhaps the winds, which right now are gusting up above 20, perhaps those winds would gust above 40 and 50 with those bands. During the afternoon hours, we're expecting the uh, tropical storm force winds out here to make the coast. And then by the evening hours, and particularly during the overnight hours, these oranges, which are the hurricane force winds, should be moving on shore. It's really going to deteriorate overnight. And at that time, we expect the wind gusts to exceed 100. Some areas, southeastern Louisiana, southern Mississippi, if the storm track comes into New Orleans, which at this time we feel is the most likely situation. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Colin, and we'll hear from you in about a half hour from now. And of course, if you're going to be away from your television, visit us online at weather.com for the latest information 
on the storm and weather all across the country. And speaking of the weather across the country, let's take a look at our satellite and radar and show you what's happening this morning as we take a quick peek at the current conditions for you. Of course, so we do have the hurricane sitting in the Gulf of Mexico, and as Colin told you, it's uh, moving steadily northwest without any significant change, but hurricane hunters are on the way, and we'll get more information from them, and Colin will be checking that out for us. Up around the Great Lakes, uh, we've seen an area of rain and thunderstorms, uh, pretty heavy downpours uh, moving across lower Michigan, and in southern New England, the severe thunderstorm watches uh, have been canceled as all the heavy weather now is pushing away. Still uh, rough weather early this morning on the outer part of Long Island. Still some pretty heavy thunderstorms of central and out on the eastern tip of the island here. All the activity moving southeast. Showers continue in Boston and New York City. We'll be getting that out of here in just a little while. Detroit, not much happening in your neck of the woods, but looking up the road there, you see some heavy downpours. <laughs> Good Sunday morning and welcome to this edition of Weather Center. I'm Will Annan. We are closely tracking the path of Hurricane George as it threatens the northern Gulf Coast with hurricane force winds, dangerous flooding from storm surge, and also some very, very heavy rainfall expected as well. For the very latest on the current conditions of the storm, plus its projected path, we now turn to Mark Mancuso in the Forecast Center. And thank you very much, Will, and good morning to you. And of course, George, a dangerous hurricane, and it continues to turn its way northwestward through the Gulf of Mexico. Let's give you the very latest from the Hurricane Center. This just in, uh, center of circulation now about 200 miles southeast of New Orleans, Louisiana, centered at 28.1 north, 87.6 west. Movement still northwesterly at 10, wind still 110 miles per hour, and the pressure still 970 millibars. So we haven't seen any significant changes in the movement and the strength of the storm overnight, but it's still moving steadily, slowly, but steadily towards the North Gulf Coast. And with that, we do have hurricane warnings and watches posted all the way from Intercoastal City to St. Mark's. And where you see the yellow, that's where we have the hurricane watches, but where you see the red, hurricane warnings are in effect from Morgan City, Louisiana, right across the southeast Louisiana coast to the Mississippi coast, the Alabama coast, and to the northwest Florida coast, as far to the east as Panama City. And in these areas, uh, residents of New Orleans and Biloxi and Mobile and Pensacola should be rushing to completion any final preparations. The weather's been tranquil overnight. Now's a good time to take care of that. And Saturday was the day for preparations uh, in uh, Louisiana, eastward to the Florida Panhandle. New Orleans, many people spent their day boarding up the windows, and sandbag walls also went up in hopes to hold back the potential floodwaters, and New Orleans is prone to flooding because of its very low elevation. And there you can see the, the boarding of the windows. In Pensacola Beach, Florida, many folks are securing their boats or moving them out of marinas as a precaution. Only days ago, Hurricane George was responsible for destroying 20 houseboats and floating homes in the Key West area. And along Biloxi, Mississippi, residents were also busy grabbing up supplies. Many flocked to supermarkets to stock up on extra food and water. And, of course, it's always a good idea to have a battery-powered radio to keep up on the latest information and have some extra batteries just in case the uh, power does go out. So that was the scene yesterday right along the Gulf Coast of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Northwest Florida, people making final preparations for the storm. Joining us this morning is Dr. Steve Lyons uh, uh, with the latest uh, analysis of the storm. And Steve... What have you seen since you've come in early this morning on the storm, its movement, and its organization? Well, right now, uh, the Hurricane Center and uh, we don't see any major changes in the storm system. Uh, it's still a strong Category 2 hurricane and still moving uh, right along the same track, northwest at about 10. We do expect uh, that it's going to slow down a little bit as it approaches the coast, but not a huge amount. I think it's going to slow down more once it reaches the coast, and uh, that's bad news rain-wise. Okay, let's take a look at the numbers for you one more time here. We are having some trouble getting our satellite picture up, so if we can get a little bit of assistance and uh, get us a, a satellite loop. And there you can see the storm now. Uh, on our satellite picture here and uh, give us some analysis on that picture. Yeah, well we've seen uh, for a long time now the low-level circulation comes in here, the center is right about there, 
and it's been it's had some dry air and some uh, minimal shearing on the western side which is good news because that really makes it almost half a hurricane except right near the eye all of the strong winds gale force winds and all the big hurricane force winds are all on the east side there of course right near the eye there's some very strong winds as well but out in here uh, there's not much in the way of uh, winds at all. For example, I was just looking uh, due south of uh, central Louisiana over here. The wind's only 15, 15 to 20 miles per hour, so that's good news. Okay, looking at our satellite picture too, we see a, a shrimp shape to the storm, and all along the east side of the storm has been the worst weather, and it's certainly headed right up towards northwest Florida, Alabama, Mississippi there. That's right. The uh, tropical storm force winds are just off the Pensacola coast and come just off the mouth of the Mississippi as well. So uh, they're very close to where it lines up here with the rain shield. So uh, very strong winds in here, and of course the seas have gone way up. Uh, latest calculations we have are maximum sea heights about 32 feet. Circulation center is about right here right now, and you can see it pretty much on a beeline toward the mouth of the Mississippi. We don't see, expect any major changes from that the next 6 to 12 hours. Okay, residents along the Gulf Coast are tranquil tonight, early morning. What do you expect today in places like Pensacola, Mobile, and then farther to the west in New Orleans? Well, it'll be breezy when they wake up out of the east. Winds out of the east, breezy and, and increasing. And, of course, you see a few dotted showers. We already see wind gusts here of 25 miles an hour or so, 17 miles an hour farther to the west. But you can see those tropical storm force winds and hurricane force winds just approaching the coast. So later this afternoon, they'll get tropical storm force winds for sure. Okay, and let's take a look at the projected path of the storm and uh, tell us a little bit more about this. Okay, you can see here that uh, timing uh, looks like late tonight, early tomorrow for the uh, landfall time frame, at least on the mouth of Mississippi, but it's not going anywhere real fast. We expect it to slow way down once it makes landfall. And that's bad news rain-wise because uh, keep in mind, Take 100 and divide by the speed of the storm, and that's typically what you get for the amount of rain. So if it's moving at 10 miles an hour, 100 divided by 10, 10 inches. 5 miles per hour, 100 divided by 5 is 20 inches. So the potential for major flooding goes way up as the storm slows down. And a devastating storm surge is certainly a strong possibility. Absolutely. Uh, the Louisiana coastline there, 10 to 15 feet is not impossible at all. Okay, thank you. And if you're going to be away from your television, uh, of course, visit us online at weather.com, and Dr. Steve Lyons will be with us at the bottom of the hour. Now here's Will Lehman. Thanks a lot, Mark. And once again, what we're going to do is uh, talk about what's going to be happening with our forecast for the upcoming day. And once again, you can see we're going to be looking at another shot of some severe weather developing from upstate New York, from the Capital District on southwestward into the Ohio Valley. We saw a ton of that last night through early on this morning. And again, we'll be tracking Hurricane George. It's way on towards the northwest, getting very close to the coastline by later this afternoon, early on this evening. Take a look once again what's going to be happening with the rainfall. It could be excessive, 6 to 10 inches of rainfall, maybe more than that, after George begins to make uh, landfall. And once again, you can see we're looking at a good shot of rainfall for the northeast as well. Temperatures today look like this. It's going to be hot again throughout the southern plains, cooler with the rain, and it really cools down in the northwest and the northeast by early morning tomorrow. Stick around. Traveling conditions, that's all coming up next. This program was sponsored by Midas. For quality service, visit your neighborhood Midas today. Introducing the Midas battery. Now for just $49.99 with rebate. Batteries, brand new from Midas.